we're building a fiberglass kit from Mach 1 Rocketry and the kit doesn't come with instructions and basically all you get is some rudimentary parts. Um, so there's a bunch of prep work that we have to do. <clears throat> um, one of the things is it's, it is slotted for the fins but there is no rail button that comes with this kit. So I'm going to use the Apogee rail buttons that look like this and I need to drill a couple of holes in the tube for these rail buttons. Um, so I need to first mark this tube, draw a line down the side um, and then locate where I'm going to put my rail buttons. So I'm going to go right in the middle of two fins and I'm going to take an aluminum angle and I'm going to draw a line down the tube. You have to decide how far up you want to put that other rail button. Normally you want the rail buttons to span the center of gravity of the rocket. So we don't even know the center of gravity of this rocket yet. So putting the farthest one forward would be a good idea. Uh, but we can't go too far because we have a tube coupler in here for the upper section of the rocket. Um, so the lower one I'm going to have a centering ring right about here, right on that, uh, right behind the slot for the fin. So that's as far back as it can go, and I want it to go in front of that. So I'm going to put the hole right about there. Um, and then the forward one, it really doesn't matter. Um, the only thing is you got to be able to put it in. It's a two-part system. Um, there's a weld nut. Um, you got a little screw, you got the rail button itself, and you got a weld nut. And this goes on the inside. So we need to be able to stick it into the tube and then pop it up. Um, now my finger is only that long, so that's as far as my finger could go. Um, if you got a small hand, you might be able to get it in there. Um, but we're going to use a trick of sticking this on a wood dowel. So imagine taking a piece of tape, putting on a wood dowel and sticking it to it like that. Then I can stick it in and pop it through the hole that way so I can get further down. Um, so I'm going to go um, right about here. It doesn't really matter just as long as it's um, a little bit ahead of the center of gravity. That's ideal. It doesn't have to be, but if it is, that's, that's better. So I'm going to have to drill one hole here, one hole here, and then this kit has an eBay and it has these bulkheads, but there's no holes. There's just one little tiny pilot hole here, and that's going to be good for the center hole, but it has two um, threaded rods. Here are the threaded rods. They're going to be like this, and then there's a sled that goes between them. And again, there's no instructions for this in the kit, but um, the, the threaded rods are going to go on there like that. And so the, the um, sled will, board will go like this. Um, so we're going to need to put two holes. Um, you can either go in the middle or offset, depending on your electronics. On this particular one, um, usually there's a, there's a eye bolt that goes right here in the middle so you have to offset it a little bit to clear that eye bolt so um, but then it's going to these tubes will get glued epoxied onto the sled like that so we need to have clearance for a tube plus the sled itself. Um, so on this side, I need to clear for a hole for the, for the eye bolt. And then on this side, I need to have clearance for these sled rails. So it's going to go right approximately right about there. Um, <clears throat> the 
disadvantage of this kit not being pre-drilled is you don't know exactly where those holes are going to go. So I'm going to estimate right about there. And if I'm wrong, basically I'll have to fill the holes with epoxy and then re-drill them. But the other thing that I was looking at was the width of this board. Um, there's not, I might have to sand down an edge to make room for that board in there like that. If, these, if the board hangs over the edge of the ring, then it's obviously not going to go into the, into the coupler. So what I'm thinking I'm going to have to do is definitely going to have to sand one of these edges down. So just remember that. Um, so there's going to be two holes and we're going to have to lay out some patterns for this so that we can drill them. And that's why I have my computer here. Um, <clears throat> let me get this fired up here. And I'm going to take a screen movie of this so you can see my screen as I'm working on here. Okay, so I just use a simple drawing program. Um, you don't have to have anything fancy. You can do this on a piece of paper with a protractor and some circle templates, but I always like to do it on the computer because that way I have it saved. So if I need multiple copies, I can print them out. Um, so on this bulkhead here, first thing I need is a diameter. And so I got a caliper here and you can get these really cheap. Um, Harbor Freight has them. Um, I recommend getting one. I'm always measuring things and I want to measure the outside diameter of this ring and it's 2.534 inches. So I'm going to make a circle on my computer here 2.534 inches. Okay <clears throat> and then I'm going to put a hole in the middle let me zoom in here so you can see what I'm working on. And I'm going to put another hole in the middle for an eye bolt. And this is going to be a quarter inch eye bolt. Um, if, if you have something smaller that will work. Um, in fact, I might have... The kit doesn't come with any extra eye bolts that I know of. Um, but I'm going to double check that. Um, I'm, I don't have the kit here with me, all the parts. Oh, yes, I do. It does come with an eye bolt, and this is a quarter inch um, shaft. So I need to make that hole in the middle a quarter of an inch. Um, right now I have it at 0.2445, so I make it 0.25 inches. Okay, and then I want to make sure that these are exactly centered. So I'll go here to the Align Commands and just click on the buttons real quick to align it. Um, <clears throat> next, I want to get a ruler here so I can draw a straight line. So here's my center. I'm going to just draw um, a center line from the hole, and then I want to measure where I put that, that square mark. Okay, man, you can't barely see that. Um, so from right here off to the edge, it's 0.42 inches. So here I draw a line similar. And I'm going to draw another line right off to the side. And the distance between these is 0.42 inches. So I got a line there and I'll just change the dimension here to 0.42. So I know it's exactly. And I was pretty close in drawing it to begin with. But there's my line and that line is 0.42 inches wide. And I aligned it here on the edge. And then I'll take this line here. And I'm going to, oops. I'm going to align this with this. And I'll just go up to the align command to left or, or right uh, horizontal line. So now I know that these two lines are exactly 0.42 inches apart. And then I want to go this way. So if I extend that up, 
So this is 0.72 inches. So again, I'll, I'll, I'll draw another line. And that one I want 0.72 inches, so I'm going to just change the dimension. And you can see this uh, little green line right here. That tells me that the bottom of this line is aligned with the center of that line. And I'm going to take this line right here, bring it down a little bit, select that line, and then I'm going to line the tops. So I now know that this line is 0.72 inches up from the center of the circle. And I'm just going to take this line, extend it out. And so right here in the middle is where I want the circle to go. So now I need to put another hole there. And that's also going to be a quarter inch hole for this um, threaded rod. So I'm just going to draw a hole and then just change the dimensions to 0.25. And then I want to mirror this. Um, and sometimes it's not so easy to mirror things. So I'm just going to duplicate this and drag it straight down along the line. And I'm going to take this line, bring it way past the bottom, and then bring it up until I get that little line in the middle. And then I'm going to oops, take this line here, and I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going really fast here, but I just want to give you the general gist of drawing a template. Because basically that's what we're doing. So don't get too worried about the how-to. Just, you know, basically, this is basic geometry, so you can basically draw a template. Okay, so on my screen, if I get rid of all the lines, what I'm concerned about are just the holes here. Those are where I'm going to put drill holes in here for the threaded rods for my eBay. Now I also want to drill holes. This, uh, this is the forward centering ring and there's an aft centering ring that goes onto the motor mount. So this is the one that's going to go in the back. And what I'd like to do is to be able to remove this ring during construction. I want to be able to pull it out once the fins are glued on. Um, by pulling it out, then I can get inside and put internal fillets for the fins to make sure that they're really locked in place. Um, and if you watched my Zephyr videos, you know I designed the aft ring with the holes already in it. But this one I'm going to have to drill out. So I'm going to need to do eight holes. And they're going to be small holes, just big enough for a piece of 100 pound Kevlar. So I can go probably less than uh, maybe like a sixteenth of an inch or between a sixteenth and an eighth of an inch. And I'm going to put eight holes around so that I can pull, this will be woven through those holes and it will give me a handle so that once the ring is inside the tube I can pull it back out. And that's what I want to do here. And so um, I'm going to go ahead and draw up that template. And I'll show you what it looks like. And then we'll go and start drilling holes in all the parts.